Greetings to one and all. Myself, Dr. Prashanti Rao and Ms. Somaina Eslari from Department of Architecture, SP Vijayawada, extend our gratitude to the reviewers and the organizers. We are here to present a paper on Global Challenges of Sustainability for Urban Villages. Moving on to the first slide. So before discussing about urban villages and urban centers, uh, let us understand uh, what is village? In planning and architecture domain, villages are defined on the basis of occupation, economy and population size. For instance, in Indian context, in planning domain, village is defined on the basis of economy. If 75% of the population is engaged in agrarian activity, they are considered as a village. Sometimes few village also exhibits the cultural aspects inherited by their ancestors. Now, there are certain myths and reality about the village. Myths are village was portrayed as a closed and isolated system, undefined structure and less participatory opportunities. Reality is that the dawn of earlier civilization shows the existence of village like Indus, Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro, even Nile and Sumerian civilization across the globe. Village has a definable structure and is a clear entity for the villagers themselves. It is also a subsystem within the larger political, economic, social and religious system in which it exists. So what are the challenges faced by the villages and urban centers? New forces of modernization in modern period augmented inter-village and rural-urban interaction. We see industrialization, localization, urbanization and globalization definitely brought the challenges both to the village and urban entities. Nowadays, we can also figure out a village in the middle of the city, which acts like a fossil of an old civilization scattered among an enormous urban mass of steel and concrete. With the evident of the industrial revolution and the rapid growth of the cities, societies faced a variety of challenges, extreme centralization and fragmentation of urban hierarchies are major challenges. Now, urban areas are not urban areas, they are, are, they are city, large town, small town, villages are not only villages, now they are hamlet and isolated dwelling and um, villages called as villages. Now, why urban village is the best idea for the today's context? If you see, if you see in this image, the overcrowding in the large cities and the associated problems and exuberant cost of the developing new cities and as well as the failure of the satellite cities to succeed. If you see in this figure, the urban core is here and the planned satellite towns are here but in between there is a lost spaces which is neither be having an identity of the urban area nor be the village context so um, that's why even in this figure we can see the grid iron patterns and the iron pa grid patterns of the cities are slowly deforming and it is a very it is going towards the very haphazard growth and that is the reasons why urban villages are the best idea for the decentralization and the development of the country and strengthening the regular urban grid. Now, we will discuss upon what is urban village. So, urban village is a concept. Actually, it was developed in Britain and promoted by the urban village group in the late 1980s. The concept was basically focused on kind of a philosophy which is working on the set of the principle uh, which is called for the well design first is the well design and mixed use promoting mixed use and it is also promoting the sustainable urban areas and um, strong belief in the sense of place and community commitment uh, should be brought by this concept so it is not like that ki urban village has been discussed in 1980s only. Even though this concept has been resurging in recent decades, it is it is a new. Neighborhood planning concepts of proximity and locality central to the urban village reflect neighborhood planning ideas originating in the 1920s. We all know that the Ebenezer Howard's Garden City concept as well as the Clarence Paris neighborhood concept both talks about the kind of urban village concept. They are talking about the 20 minute walkways and uh, giving more um, priorities to the uh, amenities within the reach with the lush green areas. In this purview, the second part of our paper is actually discussing about the eastern and western counterparts of the globe. So, so 
in western counterparts for developed countries or we can call it as a western counterparts urban village is a 20 minute neighborhood in which residents can get to most of their essential services or activities within 20 minutes by walking biking or taking public transport the focus is on day-to-day -day activities that we do for necessity or enjoyment. The list includes groceries, pharmacy, coffee shop, etc. Most urban village projects in developed countries are created by the collaboration between the planning authorities and the private developers. Means it is a planned urban village. It is not having an organic growth. So when we talk about the eastern counterparts of the globe we have considered the asian counterpart of the eastern part why because it is a most populous it is actually accommodating the most populous countries like india and china so however the conception and perception of the urban village is very different in the context of asia among the most populous countries in the world india urban villages are the villages that have been urbanized that is the original villages that have been adapted to urbanize surrounding them and there is a hardly any basic service uh, civic service, infrastructures like roads water and sanitation but now in the present context with the due consideration of different policies and other things of the government uh, slowly the cities are having the certain infrastructure uh, villages are having the certain infrastructure facility as a result of urbanization or agriculture in the farmlands in in this ancient context were actually uh, converted into the con uh, converted into the uh, sold to the builders and they are converting into the uh, concrete structures so in Asian context, um, we have taken the two villages. One is the Dayu village, Gonzhou, China, and another is the Hodgkas village, Delhi, India. Both of them are in Asia, but they are contradicting in their nature. But if you see the proximity to the Dayu village of the Gonzhou, China, if you see in this image, it is 20 kilometers from the central business districts of the Gonzhou. It is sprawled over the 2500 hectares and originally it is having the inhabitant of 9500 people, but now it is popular, populated by 147500 people. It is known as a Tabao village. Tabao village is the village where the economy is based on the online uh, business um, uh, products and if we got, talk about the Hauchkas village Delhi India it is actually this village is surrounded by the beautiful intrinsic views of the heritages so it is around 17 kilometer from the Huda city center and the central Delhi it is also sprawling on the 50 hectares approximately 65,000 population is there and it is actually the earlier if you see the past it is a home to the its identity is a home to the Mughals and it is now at present having the shops and restaurants see the temporal uh, change in the uh, spatial sprawl of the Daung village earlier in 2006 it is looking like this and 2022 it is highly dense and if you see the site plan of the Hauchkas complex, we can see that it is in and around the Hauchkas royal tank and it is developed like anything. It has a uh, it has a Mughal ruins as well as the village, village is also actually prevailing in and around and they are survived on the tourism economy. So if you see the Daung village economic activities, it is a mix of all primary, secondary and tertiary activity. You can see there is an agriculture, horticulture, commerce, industrial activities. Whereas if we talk about the Hauchkas village, economic activities are the like uh, tourism and commercial activities more. So the sustenance factor of, if we talk about the sustenance factor of the Dao village, it is actually because of the good net road network, which is it is having. So because of this road network, it is connected from the many urban centers and it is giving a privilege to develop the commerce and industry on, across the roads. So uh, in the Hauchkas village, actually we talked about that it is a tourism intrinsic economy. So uh, it is giving an opportunity, the, the heritage buildings in and around are actually giving an opportunity and even having the you know homestays um, earlier it has been started with the homestays because the villages were there now the slowly there is a cafes and other uh, weekday uh, stayings are also provided here so Hauchkas villages are now actually developed like 
uh, a commercial and the tourist aspect. Now, over to Sumaina, Ms. Sumaina Islari. She will talk about the study about the Western context and the conclusion in which we have drawn the direct and indirect influencing factors which is actually impacting the development sustenance of uh, which are actually impacting on the sustenance of urban village across the globe thank you now continuing with the western context the same approach was adopted for the urban villages of the western context the selected case studies are west silver silvertown village of east london and franklin village of michigan uh, as we can see from this table uh, we can see that the density of West Silver Town is comparatively higher than uh, Franklin Village and it may be because uh, of the proximity of this West Silver Town with the city center. And talking about the identity factor of West Silver Town, the location, isolation and new urban form which is in contrast to the urban fabric of the surrounding area give a very clear identity and a sense of place to this uh, urban village. And in case of Franklin, the village character and historic identity shaped Franklin as a village which dives into the past but is still very much in the present. The village is a rare example of structures that have retained their historic character and been repurposed for contemporary use. Looking at the evolution, um, in the past, West Silvertown village had very active docks, but due to this discontinuation of freight system or transportation system, this site then converted into a brownfield. And uh, very recently in 1981, the government decided that the focus should be on private investment and to regenerate the entire area. So over a period of 20 years, much of the area has been rebuilt and now it has been converted to a planned neighborhood. Now, talking about the evolution of Franklin Village, um, it is a very old village. So the settlement began in around 1824. And many of the early settlers had uh, trades, including uh, blacksmith, carpenter, mason, bricklayer, and shoemaker. And in the next decade, Franklin continued to grow and had many businesses, including different types of mills, brickyard, and uh, other shops. So uh, life in the village did not change until the advent of automobile and the construction of highways which uh, then this construction of highways and proper transportation resulted in uh, large-scale family uh, lots in 1920s and this uh, what you see in the image on the left is the franklin cider meal it has been there since uh, many decades and it has been one of the major catalysts for urban rural relationship again now coming to uh, the another factor of analysis, the economic activities, which uh, in many cases act as catalyst uh, for the urban rural relationship. So in case of West Silver Town, it uh, shows lack of agricultural and allied activities and even craft based activities. However, to enhance the social sustainability uh, of the village, the West Silver Town Village Community Foundation was established. And this is in charge uh, of delivering a comprehensive program of activities for the residents uh, so that their social sustainability is enhanced. And uh, in case of Franklin Village, through village events, public art projects, and historic uh, preservation workshops, the village's identity as a historic village has been shaping up with a very bright future. And, the emphasis on the conservation aspect of historic structures and use of architectural materials to improve such historic buildings um, are very much noteworthy. Now, our next factor of analysis was the sustenance factors. So uh, being inspired by the urban village concept, West Silvertown Village is very much well structured in terms of its amenities uh, and infrastructural facilities. Its proximity to the city center or urban core 
lends economic vitality and enhances the urban rural interaction uh, the franklin village uh, where is uh, has a very unique collection of historical structures in original conditions and these structures attract many tourists and uh, has been instrumental in making this uh, franklin village the first uh, urban or making it the first historic district of michigan the histo again the historic franklin cider mill with its uh, water wheel has also been very uh, or immensely popular with many tourists as as depicted in this figure the evolution of urban villages for uh, above said case studies uh, reveal two types of characteristics the former is organic and the other is planned so in asian village context the both the examples exhibit organic characteristics because of its proximity now coming to our observations as depicted in the figure the evolution of urban villages for this case studies reveal two types of characteristics the asian countries have organic characteristics which are impact of the urbanizations and which uh, usually have very strong historic or cultural uh, bond or uh, history okay. and the uh, western countries uh, as depicted in the now coming to the observations as depicted in the figure the evolution of urban villages for all the case studies um, reveal two types of characteristics the former is organic and the later is Plant. So, in Asian village context, they exhibit organic characteristics because of its rich historic cultural identity and then good also good accessibility or transportation network from the nearby urban centers. And western urban villages are the resultant of impact of master plan, redevelopment projects and rehabilitation projects. Now, locational criteria of all these case studies uh, depict the impact of density and migration of that urban village. So, Asian villages have high densities and they have grown organically and are the direct response of growing urbanism, whereas Western urban villages uh, have lower densities and uh, as they are planned neighborhoods. Similarly, the proximity to the city centers or city cores also dictate the intensity of urbanization uh, to conclude if we look into the urban characteristics of asian context in china urban villages are the resultant of urban china's urbanization initiatives so a typical urban village is character characterized by squalor overpopulation social problems and it is mainly populated by the poor in spite of this, they are among the best neighborhoods in several major cities and offer economic opportunities to immigrants. Whereas urban villages in Indian cities are villages that have been adapted to urbanization. A lack of planning standards causes new construction to be haphazard and uh, they lack basic civic uh, facilities of road, water and sanitation. As rise in such places occurred, uh, as a result of... To conclude, uh, if we look into the urban village uh, characteristics of Asian context, urban villages in China are the resultant of urbanization initiatives of the Chinese government. A typical urban village is characterized by squalor, overpopulation and social problems as it is mainly inhabited by the poor. Uh, in spite of this, they are among the best neighborhoods in several major cities and offer economic opportunities to the immigrants. Whereas in Indian context, the villages have been adapted to urbanization. Um, so it lacks basic infrastructural facilities, civic amenities and planning standards. So there is an emergent need to look into all such infrastructural facilities. Um, now, when we talk about the uh, 
urban villages of the west the majority of the urban villages in western countries are the result of collaboration between local authorities and private developers based on new urban uh, urbanism theory these villages are sustainable living programs that often involve the redevelopment of existing city areas or integration of degenerating suburban spaces into city centers a typical urban village in the western country is characterized by a well planned neighborhood with all the facilities of an urban area but the feel of a rural area these villages usually are designed to present stark contrast with the morphology of the surrounding urban areas they may not retain active agriculture or allied activities but the abundance in public green areas woodlands larger residential plots and the added cultural character in some cases offer the rural feel which the other suburbs may not offer since the urban villages in the west are designed neighborhoods they usually have less population density than the asian counterparts although replete with all the amenities certain neighborhoods sometimes lack linkage to the past uh, or uh, heritage which in turn may create lack of identity and hamper their sustenance however with improved policies and design interventions such gaps can be filled through redevelopment and regeneration Uh, in the end we have come up with the matrix to show the direct and indirect influencing factors in both the context these factors play a major role in the sustenance of urban villages the direct influencing factors may include locational criteria morphology cultural identity and physical infrastructure uh, whereas the indirect influencing factors uh, may include intensity of urbanization policies and schemes for redevelopment or regeneration role of media to create awareness about the weakness or uh, drawbacks of urban villages by making it rich to the policy makers ngos and other stakeholders so that's it from us thank you